Hey guys and gals, never here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's something on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of A Fall from Grace. So y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. Hey, relax. I'm here, aren't I? I pulled it off like a true master of the craft. I just thought it would serve them right for everything they did to us. Cedric crossed his arms, trying to repress his frustration. I don't disagree, but you need to be less reckless, and I don't know how to feel about all this. This fox spoke slowly, as he did as as he did his best to think of the right thing to say in this situation. Look, I understand your concerns, but risk is a big part of this trade, whether you like it or not. And these objects belong to scumbags we've left behind us and we'll never see again. Those scumbags are still my parents, V. That brought the discussion to a grinding halt as Victor struggled to think of a retort. Then his head sank as he looked the other way. I'm sorry, Cedric. I didn't think it would upset you the way it has. Another short, after another short pause, he spoke again. We're a team now, and I should always consult with you before any big decision. I apologize. Cedric sighed as he finally began to calm down. It's okay. I suppose I just wasn't ready for this yet. I understand. Fear not. It won't happen again. Cedric gently held Victor's gloved hand. I'll take your word for it. The two shared a short look and smiled, both glad this argument of sorts was behind them. It might have sounded nonsensical to most people, but part of Cedric still loved his parents, making it very difficult to accept, much less forgive what his friend had done. However, he thought it best to address these concerns at a later moment, perhaps when they'd reached the larger towns they were heading to. He let out a gentle sigh as he pushed these uncomfortable feelings to the back of his mind. Victor suddenly arose, almost making Cedric jump. What the- I can hear something. Someone's coming this way. Follow me. The coyote also got up from the log they'd been sitting on and quickly ran after his friend, sprinting toward the tr some trees nearby. The town, the town the fox had mentioned earlier was in full sight of the landscape beyond them. Then he saw it. A carriage was making its way along the road and heading in their direction. It seemed to be decorated and ornate, meaning this wasn't just anyone. This person had money and lots of it. And judging by the sacks that had been sturdily fixed to the back of the carriage with some strong rope. Cedric, this is going to be your first robbery. Cedric felt his heart begin to beat faster. This was all so sudden. He began anxiously tapping his right foot as sound faded and vision blurred all around him. All he could focus on was that small carriage in the distance. Turning to gaze at Victor was what ended up calming his nerves down. The fox hadn't a trace of his friend's worried look, and Cedric knew for a fact that he'd probably been in much worse situations than this one. The bandit knew what he was doing. After gathering his courage, he whispered, All right, V, tell me what to do and I'll do my best. A few minutes later, the white polar bear driving the carriage rounded a corner and reached the clearing the, the, clearing the two friends had been sitting in earlier. Why was he on his own? This made no sense. His master had told him to head to his new country estate, and that he would catch up with him later that day. Thus, the bear obviously didn't feel safe traveling alone while carrying so many valuable objects. Ah. And now he just entered the forest, which certainly didn't help ease his rising anxiety. It's all right, Jacob. You've been down this road many times. Everything will be fine. He tried repeating that to himself, but was interrupted as he thought he heard the snapping of some branches. He turned his head in the direction the noise came from, but couldn't see anything unusual. Everything better be fine, for heaven's sake. He rounded another corner, and as he did so, he felt his heart miss a beat. A few large tree chunks had been strewn across the narrow path, blocking it completely. The horses came to a halt as Jacob panicked, realizing he'd fallen headfirst into a trap. Oh god, I'm done for! <sighs> With a sudden rustling of leaves, a figure emerged from the bushes before him. This figure revealed itself to be a bandit clad in a dark, ragged robe, wearing an ornate mask and twirling a shiny dagger in his right hand. He confidently walked up to where the bear was seated, obviously having done this many times already. Jacob's mind started racing as he figured there still might be a chance he could get out of this situation. He rapidly turned around, trying to see if the pathway behind him was clear, thinking of how to make his escape. Oh! He shivered as he saw another figure appear in that exact spot, wearing a cloth over his muzzle and holding a knife. Now all hope of making a quick getaway was crushed as the bear stared blankly at the path where the second figure was standing. The first bandit broke the tense silence. All right, Chubby, get your ass off that seat. Oh, uh, yes. He clumsily jumped off the carriage as the bandit ran up to him, pressing the cold dagger to his throat. Jacob almost squealed. This was worse than any nightmare he'd ever had. 
Oh, please, don't, please don't kill me. The bandit growled as he pressed his other gloved hand over the bear's mouth. Shut your trap and we'll let you live. He then turned to his companion, who was already cutting the ropes that had been holding the sacks at the back of the vehicle. That's nice, that's it. Nice and easy now. Now, what have you got stored inside this beautiful carriage, chubby? Some gold, valuable antiques and old documents, and, and jewelry. <sighs> the bandit turned to his mate once more. Good boy, get in there and fetch everything you can. And take the horses while I tie this fool up. Hmm. The other seemed to hesitate as he stood motionless. Come on, what are you waiting for? I can't. This feels so wrong. Hmm. The first, the first bandit's toe grew and ever more imposing as he obviously began to lose his temper. Now's not the time for self-doubt. Get in there while we still have time. But the other didn't budge and even started taking a few steps back from where he'd been standing. No, what are you doing? Just as everything seemed to be beginning to go downhill for the two rogues, all three men became aware of a sudden sound of footsteps rapidly approaching, and some shadows came into view from the pathway behind the corner. Shadows of men with rifles. Guards, we need to leave now! <laughs> One second, y'all. Water time. Alright, y'all, and we are back. Let's see what's about to happen. Oh, boy. Alright. Jacob took advantage of the confusion, digging his elbow into his captor's stomach and forcing him to loosen his grip as the bandit stumbled to the ground. He then made a run for it, passing the other and heading toward the guards, who had just rounded the corner and come into view. Bandits! Bandits! Uh-oh. While Victor picked himself up as quickly as he could, Cedric looked around, trying to find the quickest escape route. The forest seemed to grow thicker to their right, and he noticed that there was the direction the fox was also turning towards. As he was about to catch up with Victor, a small object that had fallen on the ground next to him caught his eye. Huh. It was a red silk coin purse with some gold leaf decorations. Come on! He picked it up almost without thinking, and then ran to catch up with the fox. Damn. Stop right there, or we'll shoot! The guards lifted their rifles, getting ready to fire in their direction. Victor grabbed Cedric's hand. This way! The two ran as fast as they possibly could, so fast their feet almost didn't touch the ground. FIRE! The sound of gunshots rang out behind them as they rushed into the forest without looking back. Cedric was so overwhelmed, all he could think of at that moment was where to put his feet to avoid falling over some rocks or rock, some roots or rocks along the way. They kept running for what seemed like an eternity, until they couldn't hear anything except the calm rustling of the leaves above. They finally came to a halt and took a good few minutes to catch their breath. Once they'd stopped panting, Victor was the first to speak up. What on earth happened back there? Why didn't you go in like I told you to? I'm so sorry, I just panicked. Victor groaned as he sat down in the soft grass and answered with a sarcastic tone. A bandit doesn't panic, Cedric. When you steal from someone, part of your brain has to switch off. I told you so. He rested his muzzle in his hands as he grumbled. Fuck it. Better look next time, I suppose. Wait a moment. Cedric suddenly remembered the purse he'd taken before escaping. I managed to pick this up at the last minute. He handed it to Victor, whose eyes he saw widen as a grin returned to his previously somber face. It's not much, but I'll do better next time, V, I promise. Victor ran his hand through Cedric's hair, ruffling it up affectionately. I'll make a thief of you yet, rich boy. Cedric chuckled and discovered in the process that doing so is rather difficult when you're mostly out of breath. There's one thing I don't understand, though. What's that? Where did those guards come from? If it was a coincidence, it was an extremely unlucky one. Good question. I've been wondering that myself. They didn't seem to be following the carriage from what I could tell. I suppose we'll never know. The fox started having to look at the purse's contents as Cedric looked around the forest. So what now? Heading to that town would so would uh heading to that town we could see earlier is obviously not an option anymore. Correct. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I don't know. I need to have a good think about this. Both their ears suddenly shot up as they heard voices in the distance. It sounded like some of the guards were still searching for them. We need to hide again. Get behind those bushes. They scurried to where Victor had been pointing at, as they heard what sounded like two guards gradually getting closer. That bear said there were only two of them. Aye, I saw two, but there might have been more hiding nearby. The guards came into view as the two friends saw them searching some of the bushes. Luckily, they seemed to be heading away from where the bandits were crouched. You think there might be a whole gang of them? 
I wouldn't exclude it. Remember what the captain told us the other day? It would seem a group of bandits has returned to these woods. They probably set up camp somewhere deep within it. Ah, oh, yes, that would make sense. These two had probably just joined them. Victor turned to Cedric and whispered, That's it. I know what to do. Follow me. They slowly crept out of the bushes as the guards' voices faded. I think I know who they were talking about. You do? If these are the bandits I think they are, we're safe. Do they know you? The fox smiled, likely recalling some amusing past events. Oh, we're old friends. He quickened his pace, telling Cedric he hoped to get the band to these Gannets' camp before dusk. Do they have, do you have any idea where the hideout is? Absolutely none, but if it's them, I know exactly where to look. Cedric was relieved that things seemed to be going their way again, and felt less tired than he would have otherwise. Now that he knew they were finally headed somewhere safe... <laughs> The sun was beginning to set, and everything was turning a deep orange once more, the shady forest growing ever darker as time went by. Back in the clearing where Cedric's first robbery had taken place a few hours earlier, everything had been left scattered on the ground, the guards having been told to leave the various sacks and precious objects as they, as they, were, as they were until further notice. A couple of them patrolled the path nearby, just to make sure all was safe as the evening crept in. Only three travelers on their way to the town had passed that way, inquiring as to what had happened, otherwise all had been peaceful. The two guards turned their heads as they, heard the, as they heard the sound of someone on horseback approaching. This person greeted them, and as they dismounted from their steed, told them they'd been sent by the captain to have a look at the crime scene. The guards saluted them and explained everything had been left exactly as it was when the attack occurred. The newcomer didn't bother to thank the two and headed straight for the carriage. After looking at the various objects, they opened one of the doors, obviously searching for something specific, but nothing inside seemed to satisfy them either. In a burst of rage, they kicked the carriage, toppling it over in the process. The guards looked at each other, confused but also quite amused by the odd spectacle they were witnessing. The newcomer grunted and was about to leave when a small object on the ground caught their eye. They rapidly kneeled down to pick up what turned out to be a small white chess piece. Ha! Funny. I had a feeling. What the fuck do you mean, at long last, dude? It's been gone for, like, what, a couple of days? It hasn't been that damn long. Ah, uh, at long last, I've been looking for this. Lysander felt a wave of satisfaction hit him as he gazed intently at his latest catch, innumerable thoughts racing across his mind. And so I finally found you, Cedric, you fool. It turns out this piece you stole has led me straight to you. Hope your low-life outing has been enjoyable so far, because I'm going to make sure it will not last much longer. He tightened his grip around the small white knight, almost as if he was trying to squeeze the life out of it. And I promise you, it will end with both of you where you truly belong. You, living the life you were meant for in my arms, and that, and that baseborn fox's head laid upon the chopping block. Huh. Well then. A crowd of people began to spill out of the old village church, flooding the surrounding graveyard as folks slowly, slowly headed to the wooden gate quietly chattering on their way. The sound of the organ playing a traditional hymn from within the building's walls lent a sense of familiarity and almost stifling mundanity to the scene. It had taken place thousands of Sundays before and would keep occurring thousands of Sundays after this one. The usual small groups of people formed, and the same conversations were had, and what's more, the weather was sunny with a pleasant breeze, almost inviting the churchgoers to linger before leaving. Lysander's gaze, Lysander gazed around as he slid his gloves on, the contempt he usually felt for most of these common paupers had been replaced by complete indifference. He had bigger things on his mind. <sighs> a specific individual, to be precise. The coyote had been tormenting every thought of his for what was beginning to seem like weeks on end. In fact, his obsession with Cedric had kept on growing each day. The lion would find himself thinking about him from the moment he was awake to the moment he'd lied his head down on his pillow at night to get some rest. He now knew where Cedric was hiding. It was only a matter of time before he and that wretched fox would be forced to leave the forest they had decided to make their hideout and pass through the town nearby. The very thought of the amount of control the lion had over his former friend's life almost made him shiver with satisfaction. However, there was one pawn he couldn't control, and that was his own parents. It was imperative he should attend Mass with them each Sunday, and all attempts of getting them to visit the church and the town he was staying in were in vain. They were animals of habit, and what's more, he would, and what's more, would never listen to anything he said. All right, y'all, I'm actually going to pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank y'all if I do for the channel. I greatly appreciate your support. 
Excuse me, thank you for our silver tier patron, Kate Silberman. Thank you for going above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks to our two gold tier patrons, Zeke and Toby. Y'all are awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our unsafe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye